Welcome to Sunday Recap. You are here with me, Nana, and look who's back. Hey. Reverend Amy. <laughs> it's been a good couple of weeks. Aha, uh -huh, it's been a whole month since yeah. we did Sunday Recap together. So welcome back. Reunion Recap. Reunion Recap. <laughs> yes, Reunion Recap. So, Sunday. Yeah. We. It was Pentecost. It was Sunday. Pentecost. It was Pentecost on Sunday. And, of course, you preached on Sunday. I did. So, you know the drill. Mm -hmm. Can you give us a three minute summary? Three minutes. Yep. Yeah. And if you're watching, please put on the timer <laughs> um, and comment down below if she goes over. Um, three minute summary of what you preached on, on Sunday, on Pentecost Sunday. Yeah, thanks, Anna. You know what? Sunday was a great Sunday to be back preaching. Pentecost is one of the, I guess, the three big celebrations of the church. And that by the church, I mean across the world, across time, you know, with Easter and Christmas, Pentecost, this third special celebration of god at work in the lives of his people so we, we spent a bit of time thinking about that original pentecost story the disciples waiting the holy spirit coming suddenly rushing winds what appears like tongues of fire settling and um, movement of of new languages that the disciples are going to speak pouring out onto the streets a crowd gathering to hear what all this commotion is about and um, the first recorded sermon of peter speaking to a crowd and we're told that three thousand people respond to the message so imagine how many other people were listening in um, these are people who hear the story of Jesus living, crucified, resurrected, ascended and are asking Peter, well some of the crowd reject what's happening, they laugh, they scorn, the other half of the crowd are at least 3,000 people ask how they should respond and we thought a bit about what it means to repent and be baptised, to turn towards Jesus and know them, the infilling of the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. So I guess that was the text we were looking at but then across the sermon we were thinking about, you know, what does it mean to wait on God, to know that he's the promise-keeping God? What is the transformation the Holy Spirit brings in our lives? What does it mean to believe that God is the same yesterday, today and forever, so that the God who poured his Spirit out upon the disciples would still do the same for us today, a God who is still living and breathing? We spoke a little bit, I guess, about the transformation of the Holy Spirit in our lives, how we know him at work in us, but also what he comes for us to then do and how we join in with what God's plan is, you know? We touched a little bit on you know the whole series that we've yeah. been having a lot of fun unpacking of like the church that acts and how the holy spirit is the one who acts in us it is both the acts of the right. apostles but it's also the acts of the apostles which the holy spirit gives life to and so we thought a little bit about i guess how we respond as a whole to that whole series of mm -hmm. how do we know the spirit at work in us that then sends us out to join in with god's purposes in this world so i guess that's an overview of my sermon on sunday a very very good summary so you spoke about waiting so yeah, yeah. we know that um mm. after jesus mm. um you know died and resurrected you know he, he told the disciples right wait mm. um someone else is coming um and that person was the holy spirit right so um you know during that period of waiting some people went back to their old jobs mm. i'm sure there was a lot of thinking and wondering going on in that time so talk to us a little bit about waiting and mm. how to wait i guess it's one of the hardest things to do right we live in a world that is always busy that i think mm. one of the idols of our time is busyness so whenever anyone asks you like how's your week been if you don't say busy i don't know you feel this weird pressure about it like there's something yeah. about life today maybe it's a london thing maybe it's a global thing we're just always in a rush like there's always something to do and i think it's so incredible that you know jesus goes back to heaven and his final words to the disciples is wait like stay in Jerusalem, gather together to pray and wait and see. And you know, a lot of us are familiar with scripture. We know what happens next. But I was saying on Sunday, like, just take a second to think about how weird is that? Like Jesus had been their guide. He'd left them, told them someone was coming, but they had to wait for a while. You know, the, at the atmosphere of the time, people are hating on Jesus. There's a lot of confusion. And what's Jesus' yeah. message? Not scatter, go your own way, but wait together. Yeah. I think there's a message for us in this church as well. What does it mean to wait patiently as the Sam say upon the Lord? Not just always in a rush and a fit Jesus in when we can, but to be waiting on God, expecting that something will happen, but also open to being surprised by what that is. You know, sometimes I would say, some things are easy to wait on because we know what's going to happen, but what does it look like to actually be surprised and 
uh, trust that God will move, that something will happen. Um, and being prepared to wait longer than what we think is comfortable. Yeah. Like a lot of us maybe put limits on what's the acceptable time to wait. What does it mean to trust that what he says will happen, mm -hmm. but also to trust his timeline? Like a lot of us want a delivery God, like where we can kind of trace what's yeah. happening. Actually, God calls us to wait, to trust, and to be expecting that he will keep his promises. Mm -hmm. And I think we see that in the first Pentecost story. The disciples had to wait, not knowing what they were waiting for, mm -hmm. but trusting that what Jesus had said would happen. Right. Would happen. Right. You spoke about uh, transformation, this transformation mm. that the Holy Spirit brings, and um, you spoke about Peter right. and, and the kind of contrast between um, before the Holy Spirit came and after the Holy Spirit came, mm. and, um, and how the Holy Spirit made a difference in his life in terms of his, his response to um, the part that he had right. to play. Um, in, God, in God's big plan of, yeah, of yeah. the gospel after Jesus was gone. So can you just talk to us about um, that contrast yeah, um, yeah, yeah. in terms of P Peter's experience? Yeah. yeah, I mean, it's one of my favourite things about the Pentecost story. Like, here's Peter, who 50 days before, plus an extra couple of days, had been at the... He'd gone, he followed behind Jesus after the arrest, he'd been at that campfire, he'd been asked questions of like, don't you know Jesus, you're a friend of him. Mm -hmm. Even to a tiny group of people, Peter had been ashamed, he denied Jesus, you know, it's this real moment of sorrow and weakness. Anyway, fast forward, you know, the three days Jesus resurrected, and now here we are, you know, 50 days later at Pentecost, and here is... Um, Peter with the crowd asking what's happening, with all of the commotion going on, mm. how incredible is it that he is the one who stands up and gives an account of what's happened. He points back to the prophecies of Joel and, and he explains like this is God keeping his promises. Yeah. He gives this incredible concise sermon really of Jesus's ministry mm. and then there's a response and I love it like it's the same guy mm. but there's something remarkably different about him. There's a confidence, there is an understanding of what his role is. There's a there's a power in his words that draw yeah. a response. There's an ability to see past his weakness or his mistakes and instead to embrace that somebody needs to share what is actually happening so that others can understand. Sure. The Holy Spirit comes to make us more the people God created us to be, right. to make us more like Jesus, to make us more like the best versions of ourselves. So we spoke a little bit on Sunday about the Holy Spirit living in us being the one who encourages us to be more the people we are created to be but also the other part of the Holy Spirit is to convict us mm -hmm. to help you know when we're going wrong to to bring us back on the right path it's you know it's the ringing bell in our ears and our hearts when it's gone wrong you know he's our guide he's our advocate he is our convictor he's also our helper yeah. how does the Holy Spirit work you never get uh, to the point of perfection this side mm -hmm. of heaven mm -hmm. and I quite often say we're not called to be perfect, we're called to make progress. Yeah. And that's the work of the Holy Spirit in us. So mm -hmm. when we look back, you know, in six months time, like how has God been at work in you? Like how have you become more like who you were created to be? How are you more like Jesus? Mm -hmm. What are maybe some of the edges that have been rubbed off a little bit? Mm -hmm. How are you nicer? How are you displaying the fruits of the Spirit in your life? That's the transformation that I believe Jesus, uh, that God brings through the work of the Holy Spirit in our lives. Does that answer your question? Yes, yeah. yes it does. Yeah, yes. You also spoke about um, the crowd's response to right. when Peter w was preaching mm. um, and you know there was kind of like two different types of responses. Yeah. Would you like to tell us more? Yeah and I think it's still maybe two out of the three main responses we still see to Christians mm. today. So you've got the first bit of the crowd who just don't understand what's going on, who see the disciples speaking in tongues, who hear the commotion and just say oh, these people are just drunk, and Peter's like, it's only nine o'clock in the morning, how could we be drunk? But there's a, mm -hmm. the first response is one to dismiss, to mock, to reject, yeah. to cast scorn. Mm -hmm. You still see that today. Mm -hmm. The second response we see at Peter's message is, um, you know, the 3,000 people who, are, as the scriptures say, are cut to the heart, and they want to know, but how do we respond to this message? And yeah. Peter says, repent and be baptised. You know, a lot of the time in life, I don't know about you, Nana, but when I'm talking to you about faith, they almost want to kind of sit on the fence a little bit, like, oh, it's okay for you, but that's not my thing. Actually, scripture doesn't give that as a basis. You either accept or you reject. Mm -hmm. Jesus, you know, when we spend time in the scriptures, we wrestle with that. You can't kind of say, oh, he seems like a nice guy, but he's not for me. Because if you don't accept who he is, then you've got to say he's nuts. How do we respond to this news? Right. Does it change everything or not? Mm. Is it made up nonsense or is it the truth that sets us free? Yeah. Like, 
Yeah, there's there's you know? a cho- there's a choice to make. Absolutely, there's a choice to make. I don't think we speak much about the Holy Spirit, uh, and so mm. sometimes it, he kind of seems like a you know some kind of abstract yeah, yeah, yeah. type of person, but um, he's you know he's equally um, a, a big part of the Trinity. Yeah, so. yeah. I mean, we'll probably touch a little bit more on this in the, in the coming Sunday. So we'll come to church on Sunday, we're talking about the Trinity and how it works in practice, but. I think what I'm finding when I'm talking to maybe new believers or, or just Christians in general, we're quite comfortable at talking about God the Father, mm-hmm. creator of all things, right? right? We're co- very comfortable as Christians talking about Jesus the Son, saviour of all. We, we understand what Jesus does. Yeah. But with the Holy Spirit, sometimes you have some Christians who who almost just worship the Holy Spirit without the rest of the stuff. Mm-hmm. Or I find quite often like, we just don't know what language to use or how to explain the role of the spirit. Maybe we're a bit mm-hmm. fearful because we've had bad experience in the past around mm-hmm. Christians, maybe um, overemphasizing mm-hmm. or abusing certain aspects of spiritual gifting mm-hmm. and Holy Spirit stuff. Um, so what I would love to see as a church is get way more comfortable about yeah. the work of the spirit, how the spirit is at work in us. But there's something about who the Holy Spirit is. Well, he's God. <laughs> he's the one that isn't work he's at work in us, the one who challenges, convicts and guides us. Um, I don't know if I've already said it in the recap, but it's the celebration of God in us. Yeah. That's the gift of the spirit at work. You know, for every other world religion, God, is, the God that is worshipped is removed. It's a deity to be worshipped, not loved and known by. Um, got to be really careful on this. It is an outrageous claim that Christians make that God not only loves us, not only that God would descend from heaven to win us for him, but also that God would identify so closely with us, not just to come alongside, but to live with him. Mm. That is a unique claim that Christianity makes. Yeah. Yeah. That is the work of the Holy Spirit at work in us. It's why it's right. nonsense when people say all religions are the same, because actually that's a hugely offensive statement to most world religions to say that God can be known experienced in the way that we claim that he can be through the work of the holy spirit Mm -hmm. and that's why as christians we've got to do some work theologically to get our heads around how to open ourselves up as you said to the work of the spirit at work in us are we willing to give control to the holy spirit Mm -hmm. or is it my way or his way do you know what i mean and actually there's a real challenge within that actually in the busyness of life are we ready to make space for god to speak i think it's 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 important for us to um, hold hold a posture of humility mm-hmm. when it comes to the Holy Spirit. You mentioned that he, the Bible says that he is our helper, mm-hmm. and you know you have to be in a position of um, humility to admit that you need help. And so, mm-hmm. um, you know, in moments of, of worry or doubt, mm-hmm. um, being able to say, "Holy Spirit, I need some help." Mm-hmm. Um, is you know is one way that we can definitely um it kind of just uh, i suppose just just practice in order to be able to experience the holy spirit more in our day-to-day um day-to-day life for christians the holy spirit is essential as much as breath is for our human bodies yeah. does that make sense yeah. and for me i'm asthmatic like if i don't take my inhalers i can't breathe mm-hmm. like do you know what i mean in the same way if i try and live without the holy spirit I'm not fully living. Wow. So the Ruach, the breath of God, the spirit of God, the one who enables us to live, that's how essential the Holy Spirit is. Yeah. That's why we've got to open ourselves up to it. Yeah. We can get by, I can maybe get by without my healers, but I'm going to be struggling. Right. If exactly. I try and get by in life without the spirit, I'm going to be struggling. Mm-hmm. And so when you say, how do we get our heads, how do we open ourselves up to it? Mm-hmm. We're going to learn to breathe. And the spirit wants to breathe at work in us. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I have one last question for mm. you. Obviously, it was Pentecost on <laughs> Sunday. It's Pentecost Sunday. So, Reverend Amy, what do you love about Pentecost? <laughs> you set me up for that, Dana. <laughs> um, do you know what? I love Pentecost. I think it's really important. Like, we, we go to Anglican Church, Church of England. Sometimes we can fall into this weird thing of maybe like thinking Pentecost is just for Pentecostal Christians. Mm-hmm. Let's be honest, we're all Pentecostal Christians because we all are changed by the work of the Holy Spirit at work right. in us through Pentecost. Yeah. We're quite comfortable with that. I don't know why we're not comfortable with that. But actually, I love Pentecost because it is like, I mean, I don't know how many reasons you want. Like, Pentecost is the <laughs> birth of the church. It's, it's 
the declaration that God keeps his promises. Jesus says, wait and this will happen. And the disciples wait and it happens. I love Pentecost because 3,000 people respond. Like it's the start of the church. It's the message that changes everything. It's I love Pentecost because in Peter and in the other disciples, we see just ordinary human beings filled with the presence of God, the Holy Spirit at work, and they start to do extraordinary things. That's my prayer for the church today. I love Pentecost because it brings together young and old. Like that prophecy of Joel becomes the true thing. Young men prophesying, young women dreaming dreams or whatever the order is in the prophecy, but young and old together. I love Pentecost because yeah. it reverses what had happened in Genesis where different languages had caused division and driven people apart. In Pentecost, all these people are brought together because they hear the Bible, they hear the scriptures in their own tongue. Like there's a there's something of the great unity that is to happen in a world of division and racism. There's something in the Pentecost message about coming together under the Lordship of Jesus. I just love that. There's so much in the Pentecost story which is good news and there's so much for us to respond to. Yeah. A God that moves, a God that wants to do things today, a God who reconciles and brings together, a God right. who equips and sends out, mm-hmm. and a God who isn't finished. That's why I'm not sent to who isn't finished. But I am now. <laughs> <laughs> finished, rambling on. She is finished. Thank but you so yeah. much. Thank you so much, Reverend Amy. <laughs> if you haven't yet, please go back and watch um, Reverend Amy's sermon on Sunday. And leave your comments down below. Any kind of takeaways? How did you spend your Pentecost Sunday? What are your thoughts on Pentecost? And how has the Holy Spirit impacted Mm -hmm. your life or made change in your life? We would love to know. As always, we will be back next Sunday. God God willing, with Sunday (laughs) recap. And of course, you can find out everything that we're doing during the week on our Instagram and our Facebook um, social media account so if you're not following already give us a follow if you haven't subscribed yet please subscribe give this video a thumbs up and make your comment down below we would love to hear from you um, all right guys have a great week and we will see you again soon bye, bye.